Today, I want to talk to you about something that's very important. I want to thank God for the men's prayer team, um, for all that they do. And if you, if you participate in that, you're on the team. And so, thank God that it's headed up by Elder Merriweather and Brother Daniel Cleveland. Uh, just thank God for you guys. And a lot of times I won't respond. I'm just going to tell you sometimes I don't respond on the texts as, that they, as they're texting back and forth to each other. Because I want, I'm just excited about the brothers communicating with each other outside of church. And so I don't want to influence them any way or the other. And I, and I thank Elder for bringing this to my my mind uh, months back that I try to sit back and, and let you guys talk, let you guys uh, communicate and strengthen each other. Eyes sharp and eye. Cause I know if I say certain things, I'll influence thoughts in certain ways because of my position. So I just kind of sit back and listen and watch. And I thank God for, for, for what he's doing in the brothering. But there are times when I will, I will, God will give me or add to, uh, things that I might say and preach from what they talk about. And so this past uh, week, a scripture was sent out over in Proverbs 22, verse 1, King James Version, and then just a plain amplified, not the classic amplified, but just a plain amplified. And, you know, I read scripture and, and immediately, and I can always tell when God's going to move because immediately it's like a light. It's like boom. And so it'll stay in my spirit. It has not become a teaching, has not become a sermon yet, but it stays in my spirit. And then next thing I know, God's just started developing. I was like, okay, all right, I see you, Lord. I see what you want me to say. And I want to give credit to what credit is due. So, so, the, so the seed was planted by, by Elder and Brother Daniel from a scripture that they uh, sent and read before Brother's Prayer. And so... I just thank God for, for men who are in the house that can hear from God and that can even pass uh, anointing and ideas on to, to the word giver. Is that all right? Amen. And many of you are like that too. So today we're going to talk about a good name. Somebody say a good name. A good name. When we talk about a good name, we say a good name. We're not talking about the fact that your name is pretty and it's pronounced real nice and and you can spell it and it's popular in the day. And so, you know, when we name our kids, and of course, when we name our child, we try to give them a name that meant something. But when we talk about a good name, we're talking about what that name represents. What that name represents. When your name is called, spoken, quoted, read, whatever. What is it that people think about? When your name comes up on the job, in your house, your neighbor, your co-worker, because I, I want to submit to you that, that people are not impressed with just your name and how it's spelled. <laughs> Matter of fact, you give different meaning to your name uh, as opposed to what your parents did in their lifetime. And a name has to be very important in order for it to have been talked about and mentioned in the Bible. So if there's a good name, consequently, there are people that have a, a what? A bad name. I'm going to move through this real quick. I'm going to move. I'm going to move. But the Bible talks about a good name. So when people hear your name mentioned, what do they immediately think about concerning you? In this context, a, in this text, a good name really speaks to your integrity. And let me tell you something. You can't hide from your name. You, you, you can't hide, you can't, look, you can't pretend. Your name is what you do. Your name is your character. Your name is your integrity. And here's another thing, too. Those of us who are in Christ, and let's say our name was not that good uh, as, as it was uh, lived through our forefathers, 
thank the Lord through Jesus Christ, we got a chance to straighten that name out and to have a, and, and to turn it around to a good name. And, 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 and that's more important. I think, I think when you change a, a not so good name into a good name, I think you do. You give the devil a black eye. I think you encourage people that, that there is something good that can come out of something bad. I believe when you live up to the name that God wants you to live up to, uh, nations change, cities change, towns change, your family change. And so I need you to understand that we're talking about a good name. It's about your reputation and character you possess inside. Some people think they're important because they have a lot of money. They inherited a lot of money. You know, if, you, if, if, if your forefathers were popular and rich, you know, you're proud to wear that name. But let me tell you how God looks at it. What was their integrity? Did they lie, cheat, and steal to get everything that they had? Uh, how does God look at it? What was their character? How, uh, did they really help people or did they manipulate folks? I need to move on. And so it's about your reputation and character you possess inside. It identifies who you are from a moral and ethical standpoint. In essence, it is what you are all about. Isn't it amazing? That when your name is mentioned, people are thinking of all of these things. The name Doe, Jane Doe, John Doe, what comes to mind? Honest person, loving person, kind person, person with good character and integrity, dependable, faithful, trustworthy. Kind, understanding, has mercy, quick to forgive. Or thief, crook, liar, swindler, very deceptive. Tell a lie quicker than a cat can bat his eye. No good. Greedy. Is that, is, is that how you want to be identified in the body of Christ, naming the name of Jesus? You know, one of the, it's, it's a small word, but to me, it's, 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 it's just a bad word. When somebody call you a crook, that's a bad word, man. That's a bad word. I mean, and so the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 22, in the King James Version, verse 1, somebody say, a good name, a good name. is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Wherever you go, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. And, and, and a good name um, is, 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 is rather to be chosen and a good name is love and favor rather than silver and gold. Let's look at the Amplifier. The Amplifier says a good name earned by honorable behavior. Oh, there we go. Ain't in your name, baby. It's how you act. Is what you say is how you look. Let me tell you something. And I and I know, look, look, I know, I know that there are times when people get on our last nerve. I know when there are times when people just bring the worst out of us. I understand that. We say stuff that we know we ain't got no business saying. Matter of fact, we already made up in our mind that we're gonna say it and do it because we got a chip on our shoulder. We said just let just, 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 just let them let 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 them let 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 them say let them let them act you. So you already ready, but you got to remember, baby, don't mess up your name fooling with them. Don't mess up your good name, uh, uh, letting them cause you to act like, like, an, like, a, like, like a Christian should not be acting. Let me, let me tell you something. Can I give you something that God gave me? Can I give it to you? You sure? I'm going to give you something that God gave to me personally. 
And that's a good thing about teaching because it, it, I'm going to tell you something. The way I am, if, if God gives me something, share something with me, put it in my spirit, put it in my mind, and it helps me, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to tell you. So, 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 so hopefully it'll help you. In your life, in your life, you must have a no-fly zone. No-fly zone. In, in the military and in territory up in the air, they're, they're, you know, the air, the, the space, you got plenty of space up off the ground with planes and, you know, craft flying stuff. But there are areas in this world that are called no-fly zones. That means nobody flies in that area. And if you fly in that area, you're going you're gonna to look to the right or to the left, and that's going to be, you know, that's going to be some jets po uh, politely asking you, to turn around or to get out of that airspace. And if you decide you're not going to, then they got something to take care of you with. In your life, there must be a no-fly zone, which means there must be a, 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 a line that you will not cross. So you have to say to yourself, what is my no-fly zone? What is it that I will absolutely not do, not say? Mm, some folks don't have no fly zone. The fly zone today is a different fly zone from tomorrow. Depending on the situation. I can keep my mouth closed today in this area, but tomorrow now, you, you, I got something for you. And then some of us try to bring the Lord into it. Tomorrow, God told me to take a stand. God told me to cuss you. What? God told you to what? God told me to get you off my back. God told me to let you have it. No, he did not. Your flesh, you told yourself that. So there must be a no-fly zone. When you're married, the no, one of the no-fly zones you must have is you don't talk about divorce. You don't mention divorce. That's a no-fly zone. When you're married, when you're, oh, can, can, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to make this clear. When, when, when you're married uh, and, and, and when you have a family fighting in the house, put your hand physically on somebody is a no-fly zone. Uh, when, 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 when you're in school or when you're on your job talking back to your boss in a way where it disrespects him, if you, whether you're cursing him out or doing all kind of body language, that should be a no-fly zone. Dropping trash outside of your car when you're driving in somebody's neighborhood, that should be a no-fly zone. Getting groceries out of the store that you know you didn't pay for. It was honestly that it was on your basket, underneath your basket. Nobody caught it. You forgot, but you went on and said, the Lord bless me today. That's a no-fly zone. To write a check, and you know. And you're going to write it to the church, too. I'm sorry. You're going to write it to the church because you know the church going to forgive you. You know there are Christians in the church. You know the folk that work downstairs in the office. They're going to forgive you. They're going to quietly say, look, this is what you, this is insufficient funds. So can you take care of this? And would you please handle, you know, what we had to pay uh, as far as the penalty and stuff? Would you take care of that? But, but, but a no-fly zone is that you don't write a check to the church i ain't just bothering nobody i'm just this is just example can can i just give an example i'm not trying to do i'm i'm not y'all keep giving and just make sure that you don't be in a no-fly zone in this area and and, and, and and so so you write so you write a check for tithes and offering that you know you do not have that's a no-fly zone baby check your account first before you write the check if you got 25 dollars in there don't write the check for a hundred dollars that's a no-fly zone I need somebody to, tell, somebody to tell me to move on before I stay somewhere and get in trouble. See, 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 we don't have to worry about the world. We don't have to worry about what the world is doing. We need to be concerned about what's going on in the kingdom of God. And then in the kingdom of God, we got folk that don't care about their name. You got to have enough integrity. You got to have enough character. You got to have enough self esteem. You got to care enough that, 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 that there's certain things you don't do because it's a no fly zone. Whew. And, and, and
And so the Amplified says a good name earned by honor, honorable behavior. What qualifies a good name? Honorable behavior. What qualifies a good name? Godly wisdom. What qualifies a good name? Moral courage and personal integrity. Some people, they don't lie to other folk, but they lie to themselves. I just hit somebody real hard. They don't lie to other folk, but they lie to themselves. They tell themselves certain things that are not true. They tell themselves they're better than everybody else. They tell themselves that they're smarter than everybody else. They tell themselves that they can get away, from th for, get away with certain things because nobody's looking and nobody's there. They forget that God is always watching. They tell folks the reason why they can't do certain things or be in certain places or do what they're supposed to do. I don't care how well you lie or how cleverly you lie. God. God knew you was going to tell it before you told it. He's just trying to figure out how you was going to allow your flesh to fix it. And so we have to understand that a good name is more desirable than great riches. So you're trying to tell me a good name is, 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 is more important and greater than money, than riches? Pastor, did you read that right? If I had good money, I don't, if I have a lot of money, if I'm rich, I don't have to worry about telling the truth. Oh, yes, you do. It says, is, is more desirable than great riches, and favor is better than silver and gold. So let's look at three reasons why a good name is better than great riches. Let's look at three reasons why a good name is greater than all the money in the world. First of all, a good name provides stability. It provides stability. When you have a good name, when you have an honorable honorable behavior, godly wisdom, practice moral courage, and personal integrity, people can trust you. And when you're dealing with individuals every day, particularly those of us who, 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 who are in leadership positions on our job, people, when you have a good name, when you, a good name provides stability. Stability means that people can trust you. That means that trust builds relationships and open doors for great opportunities. So when your name come up, the first question that needs to be answered correctly is, can I trust you? Can I trust Mr. Williams? Can I trust, can I trust him? Can I, can, is he trustworthy? Will he do what he say he's going to do? See, people, friends, and associates know what to expect from you and they can depend on your decisions when they trust you. They can depend on your decisions with absolute confidence. Hey, do you know somebody? Is there somebody in your life that when they say something it's gold because you know they're going to do it? You know they're going to do it. You know they're going to they gonna be there. They're going to be there the time they said that they're going to be there. They're going to not only be there and be when they said, they're going to do what they said. And then they're going to finish the job. And they're going to be right there with you. I'm so glad I go yeah. to church. I'm in the kingdom of God with people yeah. that when they say what they're going to do, I know that I can depend on it. I can rest at night. I can come here and know. And I, and, I, and I said it this morning, the Fantastic Four and the deacon was here. They always here, always here. Every Sunday, I don't have to want, Lord, I'm going to have to call brother so-and-so. Lord, are we going to get the camera rolling? Are we going to be able to get the computers going? Where my sound? Is he going to be? Is the sound man going to be? Is the crowd, is the guy that puts in the scripture, is he going to be here? Or am I going to be running back and forth to And I think about when their name come up, I think about what they do. When your name comes up as a member of this congregation, I think about what you do. Can you be dependent? So a good name provides stability. That means people can trust you. And so with absolute confidence, knowing that your decisions were made with, watch this, pure motives and intentions. 
So when you so, so so a good name provides stability, people can trust you. It also opens doors for you of great opportunities. And then when you say something and do something, people have absolute confidence in you. And not only that, they know that what you say and what you do, your motives are pure and your intentions are pure. You're not doing something just to get something. You're not trying to trick folk. You don't have a hidden agenda. I watch people work in the kingdom of God because they got a hidden agenda. They so nice to the pastor and the leadership because they're trying to get him to do something that they want him to do. <laughs> they're trying to get on. they trying to have the pastor's ear so that when they want to do something uh, 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 that's not right. So they're going to bless him real good for his anniversary. They're going to bless him real good for his anniversary. They're going to buy him two or three or four suits, and they're going to they gonna pad his pockets, and they're going to do all this stuff because they're they looking for a favor. And sometimes it's just to be over a certain auxiliary or a certain ministry in church so they can have their way. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Y'all, y'all, y'all haven't seen that before. And so another thing here, individuals, who, individuals whose good name has been tarnished have a difficult time. So now we're talking about the opposite, individuals whose, whose name have been tarnished, have a difficult time building trust and maintaining good friendship. You, you, can you think of anybody that you just rather not be around? <laughs> Hi, bye, uh, hey, uh, how you doing? You look good, just so glad to see you, and you're gone. <laughs> you don't trust them because you know as soon as they start talking, uh, they want something. They don't have a no-fly zone in their life. They fly everywhere. They do everything. They say anything, do anything. And, and, and so we see that, 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 that they don't have, they don't maintain, they don't build trust, they don't maintain good ref, uh, friendships. Their motives will always be questioned as dishonest, two-faced, and deceitful. You ever seen anybody wearing two or three faces? Some folk wear it within an hour's time. They got two or three faces. You don't know who you're talking to. You don't know what they might do. You don't know where they're going. He said, and see, so, so we say, we say, you don't ever want to be in situations or relationships where people don't trust you. The second thing, a good name is eternal. Uh-huh. See, riches are fleeing and temporary. It's temporary. Uh, uh, um, see, nobody has ever been carried to the graveyard with a Brinks truck driving behind them. Why? Because we can't take the riches of this world into eternity with us once we die. You're not going to find it. Your family members are not going to. I don't care how much they love you. They are not. You're not going to find too many rich accessories, watches, and all of this. No, you're not. No, 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 no. Because you, you're not going to use it in heaven. You can't. It, you don't need it. And so, and so a good name, however, is hypothetically inter- e- eternal. Think about how many men and women of history are still being spoken of in a positive light. Think about it. You know, first person that pops off the top of my head is Martin Luther King. And there are so many others. How many people do you remember who are no longer living have changed the course of history by the good deeds they performed in their lifetime? And so, and so not just remembering how to spell their names, but the good deeds, the honorable behavior and godly wisdom, they deposited in you and in this, this, in this society. There are people who are gone, but before they left here, they deposited goodness in you and character. And a lot of times, and, and sometimes our, our, our forefathers, our parents, they failed, man. They were trying to deposit some good things in us. And so this is what I want you to do. This is what maturity does. Maturity says, look, nobody's perfect. So you know they made mistakes. And sometimes, you know, it looked like it was willfully. But that's fine. That's not what you dwell on. Because they're gone. What you want to dwell on is the good things yes. that they deposited into you. Yes. That's what you want to focus on. Yes. You want to understand that the good things are eternal. And they came from God. And God will give you those good. He will impart those good things to you and cause you to take it to the next level. Amen. 
And that's how each generation gets better than the previous one. Because of the things that are deposited. Stop thinking about yourself and understand that God wants us to deposit good things into the next generation. And, 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 so, and so the thing about it is our forefathers deposited good things uh, into us. What if this could be you? I want to tell you today this can be you. If you pass 50, man, you shouldn't be meshing words and just clowning and cutting up and just saying anything. Everything that comes out of your mouth, you should be depositing something good and decent and wholesome into the lives of others. And you should be trying to have a lifestyle to back that up. Because it's about inheritance. It's about leaving a legacy. See, if I deposit the right stuff, how many of y'all have seen, and you've seen it in our old neighborhoods, the things that our parents worked hard for and we worked hard for, we go back into those neighborhoods and it's been torn up, trashed out, destroyed. Mm-hmm. So I don't know about you, but the things that I'm connected with right now and the people that I'm connected with right now, I don't want after I leave here, 20 years after I leave here, it's all destroyed and, and just, just wasted, wasteland. No, 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 no. I want my son to act like he's somebody. Yeah, yeah. I want Baylor, when he gets to be a grown man, I want him to look and act like he's somebody. Yeah. I want Lillian, I want, I want her to be, you know, to act like she know Jesus. Yeah. And that should be your goal, too. I hope to still be preaching. When these babies grow up to be adults. And in the meantime, between now and then, I want to deposit directly into them, to their lives. Because I want them to have a good name. I want to to deposit into your life so that you can help. Because a good name is... Better and stronger than riches. The last thing here. My last thing. You have to ask the question, how will your legacy be remembered and betrayed by friends, family, or your colleagues once you're gone? Will they focus on the value of your life or only remember that you cared about yourself and your wealth? Kids are more likely to model the character traits of their parents and others like teachers, coaches, professional athletes, and so on who have position of influence over them. The best part of you can theoretically be passed down from generation to generation, therefore making your good name eternal. And I want to submit to you that no one is too young to display a good name. So kids, when y'all go back to school, act right. When the teacher calls your name, let it be to where she feel pleasant, peace, energy, and gratefulness for knowing you and teaching you. And parents, that's what you need to portray to your kids. You need to get them to understand that you carry my name in that school. You carry my name on that job. And by the way, before they hear you, you got to be acting like you got some sense in front of them. The last thing is a good name brings love and favor. Notice the ending phrase of this scripture says, a good name brings love and favor rather than silver and gold. As you seek to build a good name instead of riches, you will attract all kind of love and favor. All manner of doors will be open on your behalf because of your good reputation. I just, man, let me tell you something. See, sometimes your skills, your abilities, your, your, your wherewithal, and even where you come from is not good enough to get you into certain places and certain doors. But your good name. People will love you for having integrity and good character. I've seen folk that won't live right to save their life. Yeah. 
I've seen folk don't care nothing about God, but they love you. They love me because they see goodness. They see integrity. It's amazing. Even the devil can trust you, and so they love you. That's what a good name will do. And so people will love you for having integrity and good character. They will appreciate you for kindness, mercy, understanding, and trustworthiness. I'm going to close with this. They will stand by your side. When you are attacked by the enemy because of your good name, they will speak up for you while others will even sacrifice their time, resources, and knowledge to help you excel. A good name. What do people think when they hear your name? God bless you today. There's a scripture that says that let those that name the name of Christ depart from evil and depart from sin. If you're a Christian, then we are to live like Christ told us to live. And as you stand to your feet and we're getting ready to partake of the bread and the juice, we have to remember that those of us who are Christians, we name the name of Christ. And so Christ lives on the inside of us. And so we should be exemplifying the character of Jesus Christ. And there are times when we don't. There are times when, you know, the flesh takes over. And so that's where the forgiveness of sin come in. That's where we can repent. And God forgives us through Jesus Christ. Jesus died. Not only for our sin, but he died for the Cain Heffords. He died for the mistakes and how we fall a lot of times. So remember that as we take this bread and drink of this cup, that there is a sacrifice made. Remember, he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. By his stripes we're healed, we're delivered. But we need to remember that he died. We need to remember that he died for us. He died so that we could have a good name, so that he could be lifted up. He was in the upper room one night with his disciples one evening, and he said, this bread represents my body, which was broken for you. Take and eat all of it. Likewise, he said, this juice, this wine represents the New Testament in my blood. Our shed blood was killed. Ultimate sacrifice so that you could live and have life more abundantly so that when you sin that you could be washed and made whole again. What can wash away my sins? What is it that can make me whole again? Nothing but, somebody said the blood. The blood washes, the blood cleanses, and there is also life in the blood. Take it and drink all of it. As often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do remember what God did through Jesus Christ. Remember what Jesus did for us on the cross. We're going to pray and then we'll have our announcements. Father, in the name of Jesus, while we're on our feet, God, we thank you. And if anybody needing prayer, I want you to come to. Father, in the name of Jesus. God, as we get ready, children are going back to school. Parents, we're starting girding up the lungs of our minds to parent again. There's always going to be challenges. Life is full of challenges. There's going to be some teachers that we don't like, principals we don't like, kids we don't want to be around, parents we just don't understand. 
Lord, help us to understand that none of that is, is important when it comes to us and our relationship to you. What is important is that we represent you well wherever we go and whatever we are doing. We carry the kingdom with us. We are the church. We are the called out ones, even our children. So let us not use, and Lord, I know you're, you're giving us this to pray because we need to be on guard and, 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 and on arm. Let us not use what you've given us in our good name to misrepresent you. When we talk to teachers and whoever it is that we talk to, let us talk to them with respect and love. Let us do the right things. Let, 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 us, let us sacrifice even though we're being wronged. Our children are being wrong. Let us still be respectful. Let us still be godly. Let us still show godly love and peace and understanding because we reap what we sow. Help us to be strong. Help us to have no fly zones. Help us to live a life of integrity. Help us to be faithful to you. Help us to speak what is right out of our mouths. Help us not to slander teachers and administrators and coaches and let us be a part of the solution and not the problem. And Lord, when we have done that, show up and show out. Let your spirit rule and reign and give us favor. Bless us. Cause what we do to be more powerful than riches. God, we honor you and we thank you. Praise for all that you've allowed us to do this day. Thank you for every voice under the sound, every person under the sound of my voice. Lord, I thank you for these young people who have made up their minds that they're going to live for you. Working on their good name. God, I thank you, Lord God, that you will continue to send resources, giftings, and talents to help them along the way. Lord, I thank you for this loving congregation, especially those of us who have lived and have resources and are not selfish. God, we thank you for them as they continue to pour and strengthen and encourage our youth. Now, Lord God, we pray that you would just keep us as we continue to move forward in all that you assigned for us to do in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated.